Hey, what's up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I want to show you my bloody slash and my blood loss build for a samurai. But obviously this build also works super well with these classes. Warrior, samurai and prisoner. So I'm going to show you everything you need to know. I'll show you my stats, which stats to prioritize. I'll show you the talismans that work extremely well for this build. I'll show you where to get the katanas if you're not playing a samurai. And I'll show you how to get Bloody Slash and the incantation Blood Flame that would also work extremely well if you're willing to spend some points into Arcane. So I'll show you guys where to find the Uchi Katana. It's basically the katana that you start with if you play a samurai class. So it's in Limgrave, uh, east of Stormveld Castle. It's right here, it's called the Death Touch Catacombs. I'm gonna show you exactly where it is. Obviously you won't see it because I already picked it up. But it's a very, very easy catacomb. There's only skeletons in there and you can basically just ramp, uh, run past all of them, get the katana and get out if you're underleveled. Use your lantern if you have it because it's pretty dark down here. It's dark and spooky. So you want to take the first left here. Then go down. You don't need to fight these dudes. Roll here, then go underneath. Take another left, continue down this pathway. Then you want to continue and take another left. <laughs> so many lefts. And the katana will be right here on this body. And there you go. So if you want the other katana I'm using, it's a strength based katana. Only requires 18 strength, but I love it. It's freaking long. It has like amazing range. So where you find it is right here. There's an NPC right where I'm at under this rock here. And the way you get to this area, uh, you can use these two points of grace, but you have to go through the lake to get there. But be careful because if this is the first time you come to this area, there will be a uh, invader you have to fight, and he's actually using blood blades. And it's a pretty hard one, so I would say you, you know, at least be 50 to 60 when you come here, because he's pretty hard, and you won't be able to make it in this area unless I'm guessing you can come from the back from here. But I don't know. So the NPC would be right here. That's where I murdered him in cold blood. Right under this rock. And he'll give you this really cool uh, katana. So then when you have your weapon chosen, and it doesn't necessarily have, has to be a katana, you can use any slashing or piercing weapon. Uh, they'll do a lot of blood buildup damage and you can like try weapons out. Like you see at the bottom here on Nagakiba, you see the bloodless buildup is at 94. So it's extremely quick, like one or two strikes and their meter, the enemy's meter will be filled up. So what you do is you come see this well, guy. I took you, no today, out your own. you go in Ashes of War and you're gonna click on Bloody Slash and you're gonna choose Blood. For the affinity and let's say you're using standard there is no points in arcane at the bottom where you see attribute scaling you only see strength and dex but if you go to poison you'll see that it puts a scaling in arcane and for those of you who might be beginners i'll show you how blood loss uh, works and how the buildup works and how you know if it's uh you know applying to the enemy you won't see their bar but basically every time you strike them just imagine that a blood loss bar is a building up. And when it explodes, you'll see it as well. And you see, it does that. It explodes and takes a big part uh, out of their health. But you have to be continuously hitting them. But luckily enough, there is an incantation that you can put on your blade that makes it so that even when you stop attacking enemies, the blood loss meter will not deplete even if you're not hitting them. So I'll show you guys where to get it. I'll show uh, the stats you need. So to get a blood flame incantation, I'll show you right now. It's in Lyernia Lake, right here by the Rose Church. So it's around this area here. So I'll just put a, a waypoint. And we use this shack to fast travel to it. Oh, there it is. So it's right here. Oh my gosh. There you go. Blood flame blade. So you need 12 faith, I believe, to use it, if I'm not mistaken. To get bloody slash, you'll have to go to Fort Height, or Hot, I don't know how to say it. 
It's again in Limgrave. It's right here. If you use this point, all you gotta do is go to the right. Obviously, again, I already did this, so you won't see the enemy you need to kill. But I'll show you where he is exactly. You need to make your way through this uh, fort. The enemies don't respawn here because there is a quest uh, about this place. You need to like clear this area. Yes, y'all are very, very scary. I'm really scared. So frightened by your presence. You want to come up here and uh, the knight will be right here. You need to fight him. You know, he's uh, one of the big knights with the really big shields and um, if you're under leveled, it'll be a really hard fight. But again, you know, just jump, jump attack and it will stagger them. Uh, they'll get on their knees. You can get a free critical. That's the easiest way to, to kill these knights, especially if you're using like slashing weapons and stuff and you don't have the uh, the power of a striking weapon. I'm going to show you the stats and how to respec and then I'll show you the talismans. So to respec, you need to have fought Renala at the academy right here in uh, Raya Lucaria Academy. And then you need an item called Larval Tears. Right here, Larval Tear, material needed by Renala to grant rebirth. Some enemies drop it and some vendors sell it. You can easily find them if you go on the uh, Elden Ring wiki, like they'll show you the locations and stuff. So right now my build looks like this. I have 34 Vigor, 22 Endurance, uh, 18 Strength to use the Katana I'm using, 45 Dexterity and 40 Arcane. So for this build you have to keep in mind, do you want to use, which Katana you want to use? In my opinion you should be either be using the Uchi Katana that you start with or the one I'm using right now because it doesn't take a lot of points. Um, if you're using a moon veil, you need to put a lot of points in intelligence and you'll be just like wearing yourself out thin with points. So your two main stats will be dexterity and arcane. You want to prioritize dexterity because it will do much more damage, but you also want your arcane pretty high. Then the third stat you'll prioritize is vigor. Bloody slash it takes like 3% of your health every time you use it, so you need a pretty big health pool so like you won't get one-shotted by enemies when you use it a lot. And endurance obviously is the fourth stat you'll use. But keep in mind if you want to use blood flame you won't be able to uh, choose the blood affinity on your katana. You have to choose either or because when you have an affinity on your katana you can't use you know those greases as well to put like magic or blood loss or whatever on your weapon. So you have to choose you know you want more blood loss so the build up to take effect really quickly or do you want the blood loss meter to stop going down momentarily when you're fighting now for the talismans i have four slots now but i think there's three that you need to use obviously there's the one that raises dexterity prosthesis wearer heirloom then there's the ancestral spirit horn it restores your fp when you defeat an enemies so because Bloody Slash uses FP, let's say you're fighting a mob, your FP will go down every time you use it, but every time you kill someone, your FP will be refilled again. So basically you'll never, or rarely never run out of FP, so it's really good for this build. And then you want to use the Blessed Dew Talisman, it slowly restores your HP. So because again Bloody Slash uses some HP, when you're just running around, you know, you won't have to use some vials, um, your HP will restore itself, you know slowly but still i think it's really good for this build so the ancestral spirit's horn it comes from the ancestral spirit and it's fought underground <laughs> so that boss is located in siofra river basically you have to go down there do the quest where you have to light all the pillars and then you can fight the boss the prosthesis wearer heirloom is in Kaled. Basically you have to follow an entire quest line to get to it. I'll show you where you find the guy that gives you the quest. Basically when you get to Kaled, uh, you want to go to this Gowrie's shack. He'll give you the quest. You have to find a girl called Millicent. Now she's like right here in the Church of the Plague. Now you'll find her. Uh, she'll say she's dying of Scarlet Rock. 
uh, rot, sorry not rock, you'll have to go back to him, he'll say you need to find a needle. Now the needle, the needle is right here, the heart of Aonia. Uh, you won't have that yet because there's a boss you need to fight, so you'll probably have this one here. Anyways, you have to f go fight the boss, he's really hard and annoying, but once you fight him you'll get the needle you need. Then you go back to Gowry, um, then you go save the woman, and you go back to Gowry again and you'll have the prosthesis. Now I know it's like a big quest line or whatever and you have to be obviously leveled up because Caleb is no joke. He's called the General O'Neill or something like that. Something O'Neill. <laughs> but here's my tip, do it on horseback. And the Blessed Dude Talisman is probably the easiest one because you can go at any level really. You just have to be careful because there is a boss there and you can get teleported by opening the wrong chest or if you're high level already and you have um, Lendl opened up, which is this area here, then you can go easily. So basically you go here, there will be a giant boss here. You want to head to the right and it will be right in this chest. Uh, if you don't have the divine bridge unlocked, the other way you can go to it is by the tower of uh, return, I believe it's called, in the Weeping Peninsula. So it's somewhere down here, I think. Yeah, right. This tower of return. Once you get to it at the top, there's a chest. You open it, it'll teleport you right there. So yeah, again, you don't need to fight the boss. You just run through, get the thing, get the heck out of there. <laughs> now, I just found another talisman. It's extremely good. Uh, I don't have footage of this because I just found it. It's called the Taker's Cameo, and it's the reward you get for killing the third person, or the third tarnished, that the woman at the Volcano Manor asks you to kill. To get to that place, you need to kill one of the main bosses called Morgoth, not Magret or whatever, not the first one, but another one called Morgoth. I know it's a bit confusing with the names. And then you can actually go to the Forbidden Lands where that guy is located. Obviously this is like mid to end game stuff, but it's really good and basically it gives you HP back every time you defeat an enemy. So again, you have uh, the one that gives you FP, the one that gives you HP. So you're like going through mobs like knife through butter, it's awesome. So now comes the fun part, how to use this build, how do you fight with it? There's one big thing I have to tell you, and if you're locked onto an enemy and you use Blood Slash, it will be locked like in the middle of their body. So let's say you're on an incline, sometimes it'll go right over their head. So the thing you can do to fix that is not use a lock on if you're facing a mob or, a, or like a more than two or three enemies. Try to put the camera a bit lower, aim it a bit lower, and then use Blood Slash and it can catch like three or four of them in a row. And also be mindful that Blood Slash does have like a half a second startup frame, so you know, don't do it when an enemy is winding up for a hit. Or if you do it, and if you know that hit is really slow, then it can actually stagger the enemy and stop them from hitting you, which is how I beat a lot of the big knight dudes, because uh, they have a lot of wind up time under hit, and then it staggers them, and they basically they're stuck in a bloody slash loop, which is hilarious. So that is the gist of this build. It's really fun, it's a better way to play a samurai or a dex character. It doesn't get as boring because you're not only doing melee damage, you know, you're using bloody slash. It's extremely fun, it does a ton of damage. I really hope you enjoyed this build, have a lot of fun, let me know what changes you made if you did, and I'll be making a lot more Elden Ring guides in the near future.